uh, didn't realize the battery was so low, so I plugged it in. Anyway, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, goodness, a lot of shadows right here. Anyway, uh, I get a lot of ideas from very old cookbooks. This one is originally copyright from the 50s, but um, let me show it to you real quick. Where is that? Uh, there we go. Come on, let's focus. Focus, focus. There we go. Alright, it's 1951 original copyright, and then this version was printed in like 1974. So, you know, this, this has got all the hallmarks of the kind of cookbooks that I look for um, to really get some unusual ideas. Sorry about the shadow there. Anyway, I wanted to read you this part. Um, a lot of times these cookbooks have some pretty funny words in them. Um, and this one has one of my favorites, which is men folk. And that's a word that I will occasionally use to describe some of my friends, <laughs> much to their amusement. It, well, that is if they are men folk. And, uh, but, you know, I gotta say, I absolutely agree with everything in this first paragraph. Anyway, this is all, everything in this cookbook here is about ground beef, ground meats, and let me show you. I think there's some pictures in here somewhere. There's a few. And then there's like, in between these things, there's like these funny little factoids between, and then just like every other page, it's great. If a wayfarer in Sumatra sees a little red flag waving on a hut, he knows that the family within is eating and there's enough in the pot for guests. It's like all these little neat little things. Let's see if I'll find another one for you. Um, I promise I'm going to go back and read that first paragraph too because you will be amused and you know maybe hard pressed to disagree well like here we go here's another one in 1584 the George Inn on the outskirts of London featured a sixpence dinner which offered a choice of beef, mutton, pig, fish, beer and strange wines anybody know these words? I don't know okay so let's go back here in our, our talk of men folk. Beef burgers. It's not the cooking of three meals a day that gets a woman down. It's the planning. Trying to find something everybody likes. Something a little different. Something that fits into the food budget easily. That's why hamburger, be it in pat cake ring, I have no idea what that is, or loaf form is so popular for menus. You can do many things with it, dress it up in any number of ways with sauces and stuffings. It's a favorite with the men folk. Easy to prepare and economical. Does not take much cooking and is a godsend on busy days, summer days, and winter days. Hmm, like today. With Burger for a Starter, you can make a meal that is substantial enough for the family or guest dinner and economical enough for a company spread. Like I say, I do not disagree with that one bit. And again, I'm, well, I could have sworn there were some pictures in here, but I guess not. Oh, that's right. That's my weird other old cookbook. Um, but anyway, you know, if you're in the used bookstore or even like libraries, or whatnot. Check out some of these older cookbooks. They're super easy to modify a lot of these recipes into paleo and primal and even keto type of things. Maybe not croquettes, but um, I don't know. It's some pretty neat stuff. There's one recipe in here that's really unusual. I'd have to look it up for you, but it's like um, it, it's a cabbage and you stuff the whole cabbage somehow with burger. I've got to make it because it sounds incredible. But, um, yeah. Don't discount your grandma's cookbooks. And check it out. It's good stuff. Oh, yeah, and that's the other thing. Um, old flavors. Like, um, I've recently kind of rediscovered Worcestershire sauce. Or Worcestershire. I don't know. How do you guys say that? Um, Worcestershire. Oh, gosh. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so I, I'm going to stop trying to say Worcestershire sauce, if I look at it, and I'll be able to say it, but, um, you know, just chip up some onion really, really fine, add some, I'm going to find the, the word here, hang on, 
Where'd it go? Well, I did cryo again today, and I came home and ate a whole bunch of um, yogurt, the new uh, grass-fed whole milk yogurt with the cream on the top from Trader Joe's. It was actually really good. And, um, well, let's see if we can find it here. I'm sorry, having to sit there and look at my hands, turning pages here. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Let's see here. You know, if you're not used to, like, these kind of old-school cookbooks, they can take a little bit of getting used to. Oh, here you go. Burger omelet a la tartare. Mmm. Be a little brave for something not like that, but you know what? Sometimes that can be very good. Oh, here you go. Worcestershire Shire sauce. Worsh Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, see, this is really interesting. So, like, I don't use flour, um, but for something like this, maybe a little bit of um, coconut flour and almond meal mixed in there a little bit together. Sometimes I'll use crushed walnut with that, um, but I don't use like breadcrumbs or, or flour really anymore. You have to make some adjustments because um, a lot of those things um, act differently um, than these old recipes intended. But it's always worth doing these kind of um, experiments, I think. Got some awful meats there. Awful, not, not a w. You know, organ meats. It's good for you. That's some economical eating. All right. Well, I got to put this thing back on the charger. <laughs> I hope you go out and find a nice old cookbook. Check it out and get some ideas.